What up, Fight World? It's your boy, Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Now, I want to give some more Gennady Golovkin updates. And I did this video that you guys can see on screen regarding Triple G versus Billy Joe Saunders. And I did that this morning. Make sure you check out that video. Here's the title and everything for that video. And basically, in this video, I was saying that it looks like the Triple G versus Billy Joe Saunders fight is falling apart. And if you listen to that video, I'll kind of paraphrase, but... Basically, Billy Joe Saunders, ignore this weird stuff on the screen from Billy Joe Saunders' news feed. But basically, the negotiations, they weren't really seeing. I, I can't look at this picture while I'm doing this video. While I'm doing this video. But um, you'll see in a second that in this video I was discussing, Billy Joe Saunders says, I'm a world champion. Triple G's a world champion. If he wants to fight me, he needs to come to England. So he's already kind of priced himself out earlier in, in different reports. Now he's saying that he'll only fight Triple G if he comes to England, which I don't know if that's in Team Golovkin's plans. And the problem with that is is simple. It's That doesn't look like that fight's going to happen because, again, I don't know if they want um, Triple G to go to England to, to fight Billy Joe Saunders. They want the fight, but I don't know if they want to, to go to England for it. Sometimes when you're on um, hostile territory or whatnot, you have to worry about bad judging. So, you know what I'm saying? If Billy Joe Saunders went the distance, would they try to rob him? You know what I'm saying? I think Andre Durrell beat Carl Frotch. It was a good fight, competitive fight. However, they didn't see it that way, the judges over in the UK. So that's something that promoters and handlers always have to be on the lookout for because at the end of the day, nothing's a given in boxing. You know what I mean? I thought Orlando Salido beat Rocky, Martina, Rocky Martinez in that second fight, and they didn't give it to him. So anything happen boxing now this is definitely bad news for the diehard triple g fans and, and i kind of want to explain why now this is the situation toriano johnson has an injury that's going to most likely require shoulder surgery so just like pacquiao he's going to be mia and he's going to be out so toriano johnson in addition to billy joe saunders like i reported earlier don't look like candidates. Now, Toriano Johnson, if you followed, he was on the David Lemieux Triple G undercard, and there was a mandatory IBF eliminator fight, and Toriano Johnson was able to win that one by stoppage and becoming the IBF mandatory, and Triple G got the IBF belt by beating David Lemieux on that same card. So, basically, the IBF mandatory is Toriano Johnson, who now can't compete because he is hurt and he's injured. So, in addition to Billy Joe Saunders, that leaves Triple G without a dance partner. And I'm going to kind of break it down in this uh, particular video. Why I say it's bad news for the diehard Golovkin fans is because I made a video regarding the WBC announcement. I've, I've covered this extensively on my channel. And the thing about it is this. They negotiated, here's the video, that Canelo Alvarez and Triple G, it was decided that they can fight voluntary defenses and if you look at all the content on my channel where i'm kind of discussing this situation with the lineal middleweight champion from beating Cotto, which is saul canelo alvarez and also the guy with the other belts which is triple g i was never on board with the voluntary defense and some people were like oh you have a grudge against triple g ego you're just hating let them have voluntary defenses but again go to those videos i specifically said this this is boxing anything can happen Nothing's a given. And even the Canelo Triple G fight, they're saying both fighters want it, but they're also not showing it with their actions by having voluntary defenses. And the thing is with the voluntary defenses, it's boxing anything can happen. And now you see that. Billy Joe Saunders doesn't look like he wants to fight Triple G, right? Toriano Johnson, mysteriously, well, not mysteriously, it's boxing, it's a fight game, anything can happen, but he comes up injured. Now he can't fight Triple G. And the Again, if you listen to my early videos while I was talking about why I would rather just go straight to it, the Canelo was begging and pleading for the quote-unquote Mexican dates. The very first one, Cinco de Mayo, right? You had the opportunity to fight Triple G, and then you, you choose to fight a voluntary defense. And again, people got on my case like, oh, you're hating. Why shouldn't Canelo, why should he straight away go up? He's the lineal middleweight champion. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to take the training wheels off when you have that hardware, when you have those belts. And again, like I keep saying, check for consistency. The big problem is anything can happen in the boxing. Now you're stuck with two guys who the fans want to see fight Canelo and Triple G. And it doesn't look like they're going to fight because they're going to do these voluntary defenses. Who is Gennady Golovkin going to fight? 
Toriano Johnson's out of the equation, and Billy Joe Saunders pretty much put himself out of the okay occasion. And if you listen to that initial video where the WBC said, hey, we're doing the voluntary defenses, it was stated in that video that the reason for the voluntary defenses was to further propel a Canelo versus Triple G mega fight and get the fans like hyped about it, right? And I told people, that doesn't that's a fight, it's hype now. I wanted to see, I wanted to see that. You know what I mean? A year ago. So it doesn't need no more building up or whatever. So that's the sole purpose of the voluntary defenses. So the reason I'm saying this is this. Now who is Triple G going to fight? If he can't fight Toriano Johnson, he can't fight Billy Joe Saunders. We already know that as of right now, the political landscape of boxing, the Cold War, the new Cold War, really pits top rank and golden boy against the Al Heyman side. So it's not like he could fight if they did make a deal we haven't seen it to this point right we can't so he can't fight danny jacobs right because danny jacobs is an al Heyman fighter peter quillen's coming off a loss and he's also on the al Heyman side plus him being off a first round knockage knockout loss um i don't think he would want to go immediately into a fight with a gennady golovkin you know what i'm saying he definitely would probably want to get his bearings back his confidence back plus he's an al Heyman fighter so it doesn't look like that will happen. Now, the only person, shout out to Dante's Boxing Nation, because he did an interview with Luis de Cubas, who is Edislani Lower, one of his managers. And he's bilingual. He did an interview with Dante's Boxing Nation. He said, Laura can go to HBO. We'll put him on HBO. So Laura is Edislani Lada. He's a HBO, or excuse me, he's an Al Heyman fighter. But according to his manager, they can make that fight and they're willing to go to the, the HBO side of things to make it happen. But Triple G and Abel Sanchez have pretty much shown no interest in an Edislani Lada. Lara's called him out over a year at this point. So the only guy from the Heyman stable that somebody is on record who is managing his career is saying that we can fight him on HBO and the political uh, warfare, uh, the Cold War is not going to affect him. He hasn't really shown, him and his team, Triple G's team, hasn't really shown much interest in fighting Lada. They're like, oh yeah, he he's a H, we're HBO fighters and our loyalties with them, and he they said they'll fight on HBO. I'll I'll put the link to Dante Boxing Nation's video where um, the manager, Lars' manager, was saying that. So I'm just going down the list and I'm trying to think, and I can't think of any other credible middleways. I told people Golovkin is a good fighter, but I gotta see him in there with somebody with some steam, somebody with some momentum, somebody who's undefeated, somebody who's taller than him with power, or it, not just tall, it's not just about height. I'm just saying I got to see him in there with somebody who we consider on their A game. They're on their P's and Q's. Their last couple of fights, they produce knockouts, or they've looked great and sensational. They're superior marksmen and sharpshooters with, with boxing prowess and ability. That's what we wanna see. For Triple G, no doubt about it. He, if you're a D level person, you're getting destroyed. If you're a C level person, you're getting destroyed. If you're a B level person, you'll get beat up on. You know what I'm saying? So unless you're the upper echelon, B plus or better, Triple G is probably going to be too much for you. So that's why we want to see him in fights with like Canelo because Canelo has, you know, what I mean, never been knocked down, never been knocked out to this point. Canelo has boxer puncher skills. Canelo's big. If you look at him versus the Cotto, he would look like he was clearly over 170. You know what I'm saying? His back was all swole, like he's pumping iron and stuff. So, I mean, that's someone that can possibly test Golovkin and match wits. Carl Froch is retired. So, again, people were mad at me, and now it's coming into fruition what my worst fears, what I was saying in that initial video. When you wait, things like this happen. No Toriano Johnson, no Billy Joe Saunders. Al Heyman fighters are pretty much out of the equation, except for Lada, who they haven't really shown. You already beat Willie Monroe. You already beat the Gabe Rosados of the world. You beat the Adamas of the world. You already beat Curtis Stevens. What is Triple G going to do? Who is out there? And again, I, I'm, I'm really struggling to think of a top-level middleweight. You're going to fight Andy Lee, who just got knocked down two times in one round and got stopped. Or actually, he didn't get stopped. He just got knocked down and lost a decision to Billy Joe Saunders. That's lackluster. And again, the WBC, per their negotiation for the voluntary defenses, they have stated that the reason for it is to further build up a Canelo Triple G fight. So Triple G fighting Andy Lee, that don't prove anything to me. What it, he lost, he lost his title. Why would I want to see that? Triple G fighting, I'm 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 really struggling to think of a middleweight I haven't named, Sebastian Highland. Nobody wants to see that. 
Triple G would destroy him. You know what I mean? So who is he going to fight that's out there that is going to further propel a Canelo Triple G fight? I don't want to see him fight Sebastian Highland. You know what I mean? That doesn't advance it. I'm not like, oh man, the Canelo Triple G fight is so much better now because he beat Sebastian Highland. And this is one of the problems. T Team Triple G, they had opportunities to fight Andre Ward at 168. They said catch weight or bust. Andre Ward was like, y'all ain't serious. I'm moving up. Now he's moving up, possibly fighting Sullivan Barrera at a new division at 175 and eventually going to get to Sergey Kovalev if they both stay winning per his HBO contract. So I'm, I'm just going through this, um, this puzzle, and I really can't think of anybody that I want to see him fight. And then now let's take a look at Canelo. So Canelo, if you look at Canelo, um, as far as he's concerned, who is he going to fight? This is it's it's kind of the same thing. Canelo, he has a bit more options because even like a David Lemieux fight, since he hasn't fought at 160, would be a good fight. But David Lemieux already has a fight. He's fighting a guy who hasn't fought since 2014, and that is um, James De La Rosa. He beat Angulo, then he lost to Hugo Centeno, an Al Heyman fighter, Hugo Centeno Jr., and he hasn't fought since that knockout loss in the fifth round. I did an article on it. Make sure you check it. Boxing Ego. So David Lemieux is out of the picture for Canelo, right? Canelo could possibly fight Willie Monroe or Gay Rosado. Willie Monroe hasn't fought since he lost to Triple G, right? In the sixth round, he got stopped, if I'm not mistaken. You guys can correct me. Get your fact checkers, Google, Wikipedia. Tell me what I'm saying that's incorrect. This is a freestyle video. So you guys let me know if I've said something that was grossly inaccurate in this video. So, again, Canelo beating a Willie Monroe, I mean, what do you guys think? Does that, does that mean he's ready for Golovkin because he could beat Willie Monroe? The other person they're talking about linking to Canelo is uh, Canelo versus, like, a Gabe Rosado who just beat Josh Clotty. Before that, I think he hadn't won in, like, six fights. You know what I'm saying? He has nine losses on his record. Gabe Rosado, stylistically, he's taller than Canelo. That could be, stylistically, a good fight, but... Even if Canelo were to beat Rosado based on his resume and, and the fact that Rosado has lost um, to a lot of, you know what I mean, to the Peter Quillins, the Triple Gs, and Jay Leon Love, which was later turned to a no contest, the Charlo brother, etc. Angulo, since he has all those losses, I don't know that that would prove that Canelo is ready for a Golovkin, you know what I'm saying, by beating Rosado, even though Rosado's tough, he's a warrior and those things. Shout out to Rosado. So, Again, it's looking ugly. These these two might as well just fight each other in May instead of these voluntary defenses because any way you slice it, Oscar, Golden Boy, they keep saying, oh, it's, you know, it's about the best fights and the best fighting the best. Canelo beating Rosado, is that the best fighting the best? If he beats Willie Monroe, is that the best fighting the best? Again, do those fights, and I want to know from you, the viewers, do those fights prove that Canelo is ready to tackle a Triple G? by beating Willie Monroe or Gabe Rosado. You know what I'm saying? And you look at the Triple G line of people he could possibly face. Can't be Toriano Johnson now. Billy Joe Saunders don't really want it. A lot of people are across the pond with Al Heyman, except for Lada, who they haven't had any interest in, in fighting. You guys let me know what middleweight you want to see Golovkin fight since it's not going to be Canelo. And again, this is exactly why I didn't want to see these voluntary defenses. Th these guys, they're saying... Canelo and Triple G, they both want the fight, then make the fight, especially when you don't really have a dance partner. Cinco de Mayo, in my opinion, this is my opinion, it comes before September. Oh, that's that's not my opinion. That's a fact. But I think Cinco de Mayo weekend will probably be bigger than September because Cinco de Mayo is in the summer. You know what I'm saying? It's in May, spring, summertime or whatever. And it's, it's a, a bigger holiday in America, I would say, than Mexican Independence Day in uh, September. So I think the time is now. Canelo and Triple G should just really fight each other. And it's because they don't really have many other options that are going to get them notable names. Unless Triple G goes up and fights like a James DeGale or, you know what I mean, even a Lucian Butte. Even though he knocked them out in the amateurs, I'll at least give him some credit for moving up to fight a guy. You know what I mean? Who are these guys going to fight? Chavez Jr., who's on Al Heyman's side too? It's just not looking good. So they might as well just fight each other. I'm running out of middleweights or credible names that, like the WBC said, will help propel and build up this fight. Like I said, Rosado win. If if Canelo beats Rosado or Willie Monroe, 
to me, that doesn't prove that Canelo can beat Triple G. I'm sorry. And Triple G, if he fights Sebastian Highland, who's like one of the only contenders out there that I could think of off the top of my head, that Triple G hasn't already fought or beat, or that would be ranked to even consider at a level of anything. You know what I'm saying? Who's going to fight? Sam Solomon, Jermaine Taylor's in jail, or, you know what I mean, dealing with legal trouble. It's, it's not really many options for Triple G, especially when you look at the options that are feasible and the options that would actually build this fight and, and make it a mega fight. Like if Triple G fought Andre Durrell, James DeGale, something like that, a Carl Frotch, of course a Canelo fight after. If he beat one of those guys, then a Canelo fight after would be massive. But I'm not really seeing any people out there for either guy that would really catapult it. So I think the time is now and they should just fight each other in May instead of the voluntary defenses because it just doesn't make sense. You can keep holding out, but especially with Triple G versus Lemieux numbers doing so poorly on pay-per-view, I mean, no doubt his next fight is is not really going to be on an HBO pay-per-view. I wouldn't imagine after only doing 150,000 pay-per-view buys. I can't imagine why they would, e- you know what I'm saying, that they would even fathom putting him back on HBO so soon especially since it's not going to be about Canelo. If he was going to fight Canelo, clearly you would um, put that on a pay-per-view. But fighting these other guys, neither of them, the candidates I can think of for both guys that aren't each other, that aren't Canelo and Triple G, none of the candidates that I can think of are worthy for a HBO pay-per-view. You know what I mean? It would just have to be put on regular HBO. And it doesn't really further build the fight, so why fight people just to stay busy? You know what I mean? Triple G, I've said this before in the, in the initial video, he's coming off a unification win over David Lemieux, who at least had a puncher's chance and a high knockout percentage to at least hurt him. And he dominated every single round, knocked him down, stopped him. So that's that's a good performance to go straight into the Canelo fight because you just beat a guy and unified with the champion, even though he hadn't had any title defenses. Same thing with Canelo. You just beat a Hall of Famer, Miguel Cotto, who he never could even hurt you. So to me... Like I said initially, and I got a lot of flack for it, the time is now. They're both coming off good performances, and instead of, you know what I mean, Canelo versus Willie Monroe, oh, you see how he stopped a guy who hasn't fought since he's been stopped by the other guy? You know what I'm saying? Like, that doesn't prove anything to me. So you might as well just <laughs> handle it and not and fight each other. Let me know your thoughts on this. Who can either guy fight? Make sure you hit the subscribe button, the like button. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.